Hello! I would like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where if you are watching me on YouTube, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there in the corner. That one, go ahead, click it, thanks. If you're watching us on Facebook, please do give us a like. Today we are going to talk about verification or what is also known as final inspection. All right, just a couple of things to go over before we hit the bench and do our step-by-step -step verification, also known as final inspection. We think of verification as checking out a job that's come back into the store from somewhere else. Final inspection, more like stuff that's done in-house. And please remember that verification final inspection is both about the frames and the lenses. We always think lenses, power, lenses, tolerance, everybody gets all wound up. The frame is just as important, or perhaps in many ways more important than the lenses are. The lab that you choose to do business with, your business partner, the one you get stuff that you're selling direct to your customer, should be sending you quality work. Yes, we do make mistakes, but they should be pretty darn rare. Remember the stock single vision lenses, the lenses that are in the packets and the file boxes behind you in the lab. That stuff is already quality assured. And I mean really quality assured. They're, they're produced in giant numbers by super factories with statistically correct quality assurance processes. You don't have to worry about them. You're not going to be like getting out your lens, your uh, thickness calipers and checking the thickness of a stock single vision lens. It'd be ridiculous. What a waste of time. A couple of tips, suggestions, and guidelines. Watch your high myopes. Oh boy. Don't say I didn't warn you. Those people have microscopic vision. You get your minus five, minus six OU folks. They can see stuff you never will. You'll think this is the best pair of glasses I've ever seen. You'll take them out and you'll say, here you go. And they'll have their other glasses on. They'll look at them and go, this is little, this little, and you're like, what? And you go in the back and you pull one of those stock single vision lines, like a plus 10. You're like, oh yeah, there, there is something there. Okay. Don't say I didn't warn you. Do I pay more attention to a high myopes final inspection? Yeah, I, I do. When you are working through the step-by-step -step process of verification, I would strongly urge you to think positive. Think this is right, this looks good, I'm happy with this. If you start to nitpick every single job to death, you are gonna be miserable and you are going to waste money. Yeah, I can't polish a turd, no matter how hard you try, right? We all know that there are some insurance company labs out there that produce really, truly horrendous work. You didn't make those glasses. You didn't force those people to have that vision care plan. It's not really your fault that they can't turn out a decent pair of glasses. Be careful. We're going to talk about weighing in a second. And the same holds true for you super discount places. If you are selling three single vision pairs of glasses for $9.99, your tolerance and quality standards are not going to be the same as the super boutique place down the street. It just can't work that way. I'm gonna mention this now. Number one most important thing when you get them back from the lab, you open up that box, you open up the package, you pull it out, you unwrap them. First thing you always wanna do before jumping to the lens meter is just look at them. And we'll do that at the bench. Never ever forget that a manual lens meter is a subjective tool. As soon as you stick a human in front of it, it's no longer objective. Right? If you're young, you can accommodate and you want to sit there with the power drum for 10 minutes, rocking it back and forth. God only knows what you'll end up with. Okay. Remember, before you go getting crazy about ANSI standards, manual lens meter is a subjective tool. How did I start this video? Right? Weighing things out. Right? As an optician, you are going to have to make common sense calls you are going to have to weigh the level of tolerance that is acceptable, the level of quality that is acceptable for the expectations of the source of that pair of classes against customer satisfaction and profit. And I'm just gonna leave that there. It's really a discussion for another time. 
We are not gonna be doing tolerance math with this. That is going to be the next video. Let's hop over to the bench and go step by step through the verification process. Look, there is no way to jazz this up or make it exciting. I do apologize, but step-by-step -step verification is just plain a little boring and tedious. So hang in there. I will move this along as quickly as I can, but my goodness, there is so much to cover. We're gonna do a single vision pair and a progressive and talk about each and every one of those steps. Just hang in there. Somewhere where you work, assuming you do verification and final inspection, you're going to already have most of this stuff gathered together in one place. Uh, you know, things you're going to want. You're going to probably maybe want lens thickness calipers, but we'll talk about why you may not. Probably want a PD stick laying around, an AR pen for marking your OCs for checking PDs and such. You're going to want a pen in your checklist. Now the checklist I'm going to be using is the one from the Optician Works website. Where you work, you may not have any checklist at all, or you may have one that is far more complex than this. Your friend throughout this process is going to be a layout chart. Uh, not necessarily quite so much for the uh, lens design, but the grid so you can check your measurements. Yeah, you yeah, probably want to have a copy of the basic ANSI standards handy so you, as a reference point, and you probably want either a piece of graph paper or a handy tool of some kind like this for checking your standard alignment, panto tilts, and all that good stuff. When you got the box in from the lab, you're going to get something that looks just like this. I've got that. I've got the lab order form. I've got a pair of glasses in here. All right, and I look at the lab order form and it tells me it's for D. Seegers, my wife. So I have to go find the tray for D. Seegers. I find a tray and it says one of two. So I must make sure that I have the right pair of glasses for the right order. In the tray, I'm going to have the lab order and the original order that I wrote up. So these are a single vision, 225.50, 225.50, Moto Alpha. Right, okay, so I got the right frame in the right tray with the right paperwork. Good place to start. And like I said, the first thing I'm gonna do is simply look at them. And boy, you see some scary stuff sometimes. The shape looks correct. I don't see anything glaring on the lenses. Don't see any glaring standard alignment or bench alignment problems. I don't see any damage of any kind. Things look pretty good. So no red flags there. It says check my lens powers. All right, my lens powers, I'm gonna also do a quick check. Make sure that my what I wrote up for this job matches what came back from the lab. 225, 50, 20, 225, 75, five. PD is 64, good there. All right, and I'm going to, of course, have my lens meter adjusted for me since I'm the only person working here. I don't think that's a problem. Right eye, right eye, right lens. Into the lens meter we go. And you always check your right lens first. Now, here's one of those things we have to sidestep for a while and talk. If you have high-powered lenses, and if you believe that you have a vertical imbalance problem, then you go back and you start with your stronger lens in the 90th first. That's only if you have an issue or think you have an issue, and then you start doing your application of tolerance and stuff that we'll go over in the next video. But for now, always start with your right. I've got a plus 225, and I've got a 28. Everything is lined up pretty good. Put on my marks, move to my left. Everything stays nice and level in there. I've got a 225 again. My axis this time is five, minus 75. Wonderful. And there I've got my OCs dotted up. I've got my checklist here. I checked my sphere power, checked my cylinder power. I checked my axis, sphere, cylinder, and axis. Now it says the next is PDs correctly measured monocularly. I've got a 3232. So I lay this on my chart. 
and I line everything up using my grid with my bridge. There's 32 and 32, so absolutely perfectly beautiful. There's no vertical imbalance present, barely enough power to have that happen anyway, and I didn't see anything, everything lined up when I moved across from my right to my left and left the spectacle table in the same place, so we're good. Is the material the correct one ordered? What did I order? I ordered Trivex, and that is what came in on this job. It's listed on the lab order form as Trivex. Good there. Is the lens style correct? Is it a straight top 28, a 35, etc.? It's a single vision lens, single vision job, single vision. We're good to go there. Center thickness and edge thickness. For plus lenses, do the lenses seem abnormally thick at the center? Well, let's see, these are plus lenses. And no, they seem actually incredibly thin for plus lenses. I'm extremely happy there. I'm not gonna go getting my calipers out or anything. These are wonderful. These are not minus, so I'm not gonna be looking at that in this particular job. Now let's talk about this for a little bit. I just said stock single vision lenses, if these were stock lenses, which they are not, they're already Q8. They are already manufactured to be the thinnest possible they can for the diameter of the blank. So you're not gonna argue with it or question it. Just wouldn't make any sense. As to thickness issues from a lab, different labs produce different lenses to different thicknesses, particularly in, depending on the material that they use. Some labs have a much more generous willingness to cut a lens thin than others do. What it really comes down to is the software used to generate the lens. If you supply the lab with enough information, really good accurate measurements and a shape, preferably a frame shape trace, and they know what they're doing with their software, they can literally make that lens as thin as it can be made. It's just that simple. Now, you may get back a plus lens and you may go, wow, these things are really heavy. And you think, well, what is the center thickness on this plus lens? And you look and it's like, oh man, six millimeters. Whoa, okay, wow, that's huge, all right? But stop and think about the powers you have. Stop and think about the material you have. Stop and think about the frame size that you have. Maybe you took this person from a 67i in CR39 to a 52i in 160. Right? They're, they're going to be thrilled, right? So it's not a, a subjective call. Maybe it's a little bit more of an objective call. You have to know what is realistic for the given lens parameters and frame parameters and material. So if you're ever really in doubt, man, I, I would check with the lab. I said, this is what I've got. This is what I had in the past. This is what I'm comparing it to. Where are we? What should we, what should I have here? Tell me what we did to make this as thin as possible. Does the lens have all the required coatings? Let's see, I've definitely got a nice, beautiful AR on there, front and back. Okay, does it have the tint that was asked for? Well, I didn't ask for a tint in this case, so that's an X. Does it meet the standards for UV? That would be, if I had a tint, either it would be marked on my lab order form. If I didn't have a UV meter, if not, I go over to the UV meter, put them in and double check. Does it have all the lens add-ons it should? Should this have been a polarized, polish, photochromic? Make sure that that stuff is present if it's asked for. Surface quality, scratches, pits, specks, haze, orange peel, funny marks, bubbles, sags, cover all that stuff on the Optician Works website. And I am just looking against a beautiful clear or black background with a bright clear white light and just looking at the overall quality of the AR coat in the lens itself. Not a bad idea to grab a cleaning cloth and just rub your fingers over the lens. You'd be surprised sometimes you can pick up warps. You can pick up places where the stylus had a little trouble and went a little too deep. You can feel warps and waves, but these feel just fine. 
Uh, scratches, obviously you need to watch out for. Pits are little tiny dimples, um, actually almost like a cavity or a hole, pinpoints. Specks are things that get into the monomers. They're little black dots that are inside, inherent within the lens. Uh, haze, that's if the AR coat wasn't good, if there was something that was wrong during the application process and they look kind of cloudy or foggy. Orange peel is quite rare today, but again, it's an AR or a scratch coating application error, and it looks like orange peel. Funning marks are things that you look for. They're super, super smooth, abrasive, circular motions. Bubbles, again, would be a coating error, and sags would be if they threw enough material in the spin coating, it didn't work out quite right, and you literally have a run down the front of the lens. All those things are relatively uncommon today. They used to be far more prevalent than they are, but check for those. Now, I was talking about weighing things out you know, on the whiteboard. Uh, you know, if I had a speck, an infinitesimal, tiny little black dot up in the way far temporal corner of a pair of glasses, I would weigh what those glasses are used for, the person I was selling them to. I would weigh it out. Am I going to reject that job, especially if it was surfaced, it took a couple of days to go to the lab and come back? It's one of those places you would have to use a common sense and make a call on which is more important, customer satisfaction or perhaps there being a little tiny speck on that lens. Next, edge bevel quality, type and position, stars, chips, sharps, edges. I'm not necessarily going to pop lenses out. Uh, Semi-rimless, of course, you have some of the edge exposed. Fully rimless, you have all of the edge exposed. Something like this, you know, it looks great. I'm really looking deep inside where the bevel and the bezel meet. I don't see any damage. I don't see chips. I don't need any spaces. There are no stars chipping. AR coat goes right out to the edges. The high to bevel correct for lens thickness. We talk about this in one of the other videos. If this was a really big, thick lens, I play with the bevel and I want to push it either forward or back so it looks cosmetically better. Is that there? That's what that means and I'd be looking for. Does the lens have a safety bevel on it. Well, in this case, the edge that was cut is actually behind and inside the frame, so I couldn't even tell. There's nothing there. If I really wanted to find out, I'd pop these out and rub my finger along there. Lens stability. The lens does not move in the eye wire. Right? Now, this is a full plastic eye wire, and I grab those lenses and I get Oh, just the tiniest, tiniest little bit of movement in one direction. Tiniest little bit. I'm, and I'm really grabbing this, okay? So those are fine. Those are lenses are not going anywhere. If I have a full metal eye wire with a traditional close, and it is a, you know, a typical screw mount frame, and I look inside here, let me show you what that would look like on the board, what would pass and what wouldn't, because it's a whole lot easier than trying to show you up close on this frame. Just a little easier to see it this way. You're looking at the eye wire closure where the two pieces come together. You see how that screw has been tightened down to retain the lens, the bevel bezel combination. Obviously, this is perfect. You want those two pieces touching, beautiful flush. Screw head, bottom, no protruding pieces, looks fantastic. This much of a gap, you can see the screw, you've only got the one corner touching, no, not okay. You need to grab your screwdriver, tighten that down, fix it, resize the lens, whatever it takes in order to get that right. Obviously, that's a no. You can't actually have full gap across the entire thing. That job simply was not finished correctly or somebody forgotten to tighten down that screw. Certainly try that first. If not, you can need to take that lens out, resize a little bit and put it back in and tighten that all the way down. And yes, that was something you would probably try to do yourself and fix in-house, not send it back to the lab, let them do it, have it come back. That would be petty and wasting time and risking pissing off a customer. This is okay. If you have a half, two thirds, you don't see your screw, you've got this little gap here, Sure, there, there's nothing wrong with that. That's going to pass. That's going to stay together. That's going to hold that lens in place just like it should. You have enough contact. Got it? Good. 
So no gaps, no spaces, lens frame, everything looks good. All right, I'm down to my frame already. What is my frame? It says that Mrs. Seegers bought a Modo Alpha, and that is an Alpha, and it's a 48-21-145 temples. It's purple. I believe we have the right frame for the right job. So it is the correct model. It is the correct color. It is the correct dimensions for A, B, D, B, L, and temple length. And we checked when we opened this up, is it free from blemishes, scratches, burns, imperfections, etc.? Yes, it is. I am happy with the way this job came back from the lab. I would clean them all up, put them into a beautiful case, put them aside, call Mrs. Seegers and have her come in to pick up her new glasses. All right, that was a single vision pair. Now let's take a look at how much more complex it gets when we have a progressive. 99% of the time when you get a progressive pair back from the lab, it will either have tick marks, the original painted on markings from the factory, or the cling stickers. Now, if you have the cling stickers like these, immediately take the glasses, take your AR pen, find your 180 reference points and mark them using the cling sticker as a guide and then get rid of them, right? Because you can't read prism through them. You can't check for vertical imbalance or prism thinning or anything because they block that area and they're just kind of annoying or a nuisance anyway. Now, I'm not going to go through every single step here again, but I've got a beautiful, fully rimless pair of glasses. Obviously, just like I said, I'm going to look at them. Stuff like this, I generally use my prescription aligner and I drop them on there and I make sure that everything lines up like it should, that all of my drill points and mounting points are level, square, straight, in the same place across the entire frame. I've got my reference points, my 180 laser markings. And now I'm going to take my lens and I'm going to put it on my layout chart. I'm going to lay those dots directly over. And for progressive lens work, this is everything. I need to mark my fitting cross. I need to mark my prism reference point, And I need to mark my distance circle. Now back to looking at these again, I wanna make sure that my 180 marks are straight across, horizontal, beautiful. I could suppose I could use my graph paper to, to check that or my prescription aligner, either one. If those were not perfectly level straight across that frame, this job would not pass. That means that they were cut crooked. It wouldn't work. You're, near area, your inset, those would be in the wrong place. They'd be bowed out, bowed in, they wouldn't line up with your eyes and the progressive lenses wouldn't work. We check the add powers of a progressive lens directly off the lens. It says I need an add power of 250. I look at my laser etching marks and I find what power this lens is. I see a 25 and a 2.5 tells me that I've got a 2.50 add in each of these, so this is good. I can go back to my chart here, and I need to check my monocular customer PDs. So I use my chart. I line everything up using my bridge. I bring this down onto the PD, the monocular horizontal reference points, and I need 3435, and I have got 3435. Perfect. Because this is a fully rimless, I can even check my heights here. Straight down using the lower portion of this, I needed 2424, 24, and I've got 2424. 24, so we're, we're good there. Excellent. 
All right, now we have a tips for verification and neutralization of progressive lenses sheet for you on the website. And gonna run through really quick. We compare and verify by notation, the 180 orientation, the add power, the PD, the fitting height, distance power with prism if indicated. We'll get there in just a second. Compensated lens design. If that is indicated, then you're going to wanna to match the compensated lens powers to what you see. Now, if you needed to check panto tilt and angles and such for a compensated design, you could grab a sheet like this and you can check your alignment. Here's your wrap, different styles. And I could lay my frame on here and I could look down. I have got, I've got about 11 degrees, which is wonderful. A little shy of the eight, definitely shy of the five, but 11 is about what you want, 12, 12 and a half, somewhere in there. Checking, that could actually use a little in that. Yeah, I'm close, a little closer to eight on that one, so probably we do a little frame bending to get that pantoscopic tilt even on both sides. It says, always use the lens-specific layout chart and mark the lenses or lenses with distance circle, prism dot, fitting cross, nasal and temporal 180 lines. And again, note the add power from the laser engravings. That is the correct method to do that. Uh, don't try to read them in the lens meter. It just doesn't work. Check that the nasal and temporal dots or symbols are parallel to the 180. Again, you, th these have to be level within the frame. Get them nice and level if I needed to. You might be able to rock a semi-rimless a little bit or bend a frame a little, but not very much. You, know, you only have a couple of degrees of play there and it's just simply gonna have to be rejected and go back. Probably spun on the block when they were making the lenses. All right, everything looks good up to this point. It's time to check our powers. Uh, progressive lens, so things tend to get kind of weird. We cover this in the lens meter series and on the website, so I'm not gonna get too into detail here, but progressive lenses, one of the issues with them is that you have what is called prism thinning, which is one of the reasons that when you go to check a progressive lens and you put the distance circle in front of the lens stop on the lens meter that the target inside may be displaced. That's when you have to take your PCD and rotate it around to get the target in so you can check your power. That prism thinning, if you think there might be a vertical imbalance with it, that's when you go to your prism reference point, go from left to right, and make sure that there is no difference. As long as they're balanced, equal, two down, two up, three down, three down, three up, three up. As long as they're the same direction and the same power, you're going to be fine. So that's your first part. Second part is just plain reading prism. If it's called for in a lens order, is about as simple as it gets. You put it on the prism reference point and what you see is what you get with your PCD at 090. So I am ready to check these out. I would check it out just like any other job. Take my distance circle, right lens, right lens. Put that distance circle right in the matched opening of the lens stop and it says I've got a Plano all right Plano at 20 and I have got Plano at 20 looks great with 50 sill absolutely beautiful no reason to tap I have my fitting crosses marked on this lens so I already have I think I've already checked my PDs and it says I have got a Plano at five, and that I certainly do. And then minus 75, looking good. My distance powers are just fine on this. I have checked everything else on this pair. Distance is good, add power I already checked by looking at the lens, which is the correct way to do it. Where you work, you may have a far more complex checklist or you may not have any at all. Next week, we will go through the steps of what happens when I look and it doesn't match what I'm supposed to have from the lab. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of that. Please make sure that every lens that you verify comes from Laramie K and I will see you again next week.